Can you imagine a world without water even for a few hours? It's not possible, especially in this period where we're facing the pandemic, the coronavirus. We need water to constantly, regularly wash our hands. We need water to drink. Give power is bringing water here. So that means give power is bringing life to this community. During the pandemic, we've really doubled down on our efforts in building solar water farms because for communities that don't have access to clean water, the need is just too great. Ansagale is uh, the largest community on the island of Laganav. Uh, Laganav is referred to as the Forgotten Haiti because their access to even basic government services are really, really limited. There is no public water system there. The water supply that they have in the community is actually managed by another organization called West Indies Self-Help. They said, we just don't have enough water. We have installé près de 24 fontaines dans toute la ville. Donc, mais en dépit de toutes les difficultés, ça fait toutes fontaines ne pas qu'à répondre. Parfois, nous ne sommes pas capables de trouver même. Et tout dernièrement, là, c'était une tête chargée. None of the water that they have on the island is treated. Up to 90% of the water here is blackish water. Haiti is a country that has received a lot of aid from a lot of people, but not a lot of the projects last. They really need a sustainable system that can produce uh, an amazing amount of water. We started to build a 75,000 liter per day Blue Drop Max desalination system with around 58 kilowatts of solar, 180 panels. It was probably one of the most difficult times to actually operate in Haiti. The government would continuously shut down, and as if all of that wasn't hard enough, coronavirus hit. It's difficult to get supplies to different regions, and we can't be there on the ground to help facilitate the construction of projects right now. So now how do we finish building the project? How do we operate this system? We we'll have to wait until the pandemic stops so that technicians can travel to Haiti. However, I had something different in my mind. Our site manager, Jetro, was without a doubt the MVP for that entire project. He's the man. <laughs> he would stay up late watching YouTube videos to learn how to wire up a variable frequency drive or to install flow meters. All of those little details that were nowhere near his realm of expertise he just really wanted to push that forward. Necessity is the mother of all invention. This unifying pandemic is making us better in some senses. We hire local teams. The West Indies Self-Help has been a, an advocate and partner organization of ours on the island. It's really heartwarming to see that number of people rallied around this, this project to just make it happen. <laughs> It was an amazing feeling when it finally went live. Everybody's a little like weary about tasting it at first and then and then it's a big smile. <laughs> I'm super excited, I'm beyond happy. And it really is a team celebration uh, to see those things get over the finish line. You know, I wish I was there. If 1,000 people in this community drink the water or try the water, it, it was 1,000 positive feedback. So, I'm going to take a the best water ever seen, the best water ever existed on the island, the best water in the Caribbean. <laughs>